How's it going, guys? I just took the 7220 off the drill. We're gonna go hook up to the disc vine. See, my dad's still putting out the remnants of the uh, situation we had over the weekend. Sun is out today again, and it's time to mow our fifth cutting hay. Got a good bit of rain over the weekend, but things are drying out a little bit now. Got the mower ready to go. So this is fifth cutting alfalfa and we have this sorghum that we interceded into it so it looks kind of grassy. It's good to see that stuff come up now we got some rain. Try to get this waterway in mode too as long as it's not too muddy in there. It's nice I don't have to make a back cut. I'm just driving in this trick how we planted two weeks ago. My dad's gonna take over now. We only got a little over 20 acres of alfalfa this year, so it doesn't take that long to mow. It's the next morning here. Finally got this fire completely snuffed out pushing into a pile. We're gonna spread that in the field then after we get the alfalfa off. My dad finished mowing that hay yesterday. We're hoping to get some sunlight, try to get that stuff dried out. Beautiful sunrise this morning. So I got the special needs pen opened up. Gonna throw some bedding in here. I wanna do a milking video soon. We got a new tea prep system. Still milking cows, Just haven't shown that in a while. We always throw bedding in here every other morning. Two big scoops with the wood truck bucket. Gonna get the parlor washed down. So we got the trailer done to the heifer barn. There's two heifers out of here that we're gonna sell. Both right in here. Six, 62 doesn't have a tag anymore. What? What? We got two heifers loaded up and now there's four little calves. Got three nice Angus here. And then this is a part Montebillard. We're currently getting over $600 for these week old Angus calves. It's incredible. So we're selling those two breeding age heifers. The one we already bred a few times. She's getting kind of old, but she didn't take then the other heifer there was a half Montebillard. We had crossbred a couple Holstein and Montebillard just to try that, see if we could see any advantage from the hybrid vigor, I guess. We had calved one of those in a couple months ago, if you remember, I showed it in a video. And she was actually one of the lowest producing heifers, or the lowest producing heifer we had currently. 50 days in milk, she was only making 50 pounds at 3.2% fat. At that point with our heifers, we'd like to see them making 70 or 80 pounds. And four percent fat at least we sold that older one already now this other one rather than raising her up decided just to sell her she already looked a little bit beefy i guess we're gonna stick with the holsteins i think it's hard to beat holstein genetics for turning feed into milk they have some challenges with health and fertility versus probably some crossbreed animals but if we can manage things well that's gonna be hard to beat the production so i'm gonna go get some breakfast and today we're actually going to a open house for a farm that's on the other side of the county they milk quite a few more cows than us. They just built a new facility with a rotary parlor. So I'm going to take my camera along. 
See if I can show you guys a little bit what's going on there. So this is the most efficient way you can milk cows. Uh, they're entering right there, milkers get put on, and then they just wrap around, and there's automatic post dipper, and then they just back off and leave. Constant flow. So this is a Madero parlor. I think they're out of Mexico. It's a fully stainless steel rotary. No concrete on it. So this is the holding area here. And something unique with this, it's got a slatted floor, so there's a, a four foot pit underneath this whole holding area and it's sloped out the back, so manure just runs down to the pit. It's nice they don't have to scrape it and wash it down every milking. Got a Hoover crowd gate. It's the same guys that make our silage shaver. Make these crowd gates. I've never seen a holding area so massive. And this is the side where they exit the parlor and they all run through there. They got a sort gate there, so it'll separate the cows out if they need to do anything with them. Got these different pens here. They have a couple different freestyle barns, but this is their new one they built with the parlor. 600 stalls, slatted floor like ours. It's got a 10 foot pit. It's a six row barn, ours is four, so this one has an extra row of stalls along the outside wall on each side. They put a ceiling in it, so it helps keep the heat from coming off the roof, and then in the winter it helps with ventilation and keeps it from getting too cold in here, I guess, as well. Also brightens everything up really nice. Yeah, they don't have headlocks in most of the barn, just the uh, deck rail there. It's down at the feeding area. All their bunks drain down to this area here. It's a little pond. Got to catch all that stuff, and then they haul it out into the fields. I think I heard this bunk had over 1,200 loads of silage in here, so I don't know. Somewhere around 15,000 ton, give or take, probably. Five times all of our bunks in, in one. Got a couple payloaders here for mixing. Big defacer. Got another bunk of silage. So, so this is the bunk they just filled. And they're feeding out of this one here. So that's corn silage and then they have triticale on the end, rye or triticale. 12 foot bunk walls. This is what 12 footers are like dad, yeah, give you an idea. You're talking about 12 foot bunk walls a little bit. Definitely a difference in here compared to ours. So what do you think of rye in a bunker? These guys do a lot of spring forage. Yeah, that's, that is high, that's 15 plus feet there in the middle. Yeah, feeding 1,600 milking cows plus a bunch of heifers, and yeah, they probably work back through here pretty quickly. They still use the upright silos for high moisture corn. So they have the bunks for the forages, and then they still make use of these silos. This is the back of their old parlor here. Yeah, this is the old milking parlor they moved out of last year. calf barns here interesting design they have free and clear here for the front third of the pen so they can actually have some sort of scraper that sticks out gets rid of that moisture and mess in the front keeps them dry in the back I guess a couple of those barns these facilities were all built with the same company that built our heifer barn and this one's actually a very similar style they use this for their uh, three four or five month old heifers I guess something like that the only difference here is they don't have the slatted floor so they have to scrape this out glad we have the slats in the front of ours to keep everything clean ours we use for a little bit older heifers but it's the same building so instead of the pit they just built this manure storage area at the end you push the manure out the end and then scoot this out of here made it back home now so I wanted to shout out a YouTube channel one of the young guys there at uh, the Roar farm Ashland he has a YouTube channel, Roar Dairy Productions. I'll put the link to his channel in the description under the video. Check it out. It'd be great if you guys could 
check out his channel, subscribe, see what his job looks like and how they do things differently than we do. It's time for feeding. My dad's gonna be feeding cows this afternoon. I'm just gonna work in my office, do some video editing for a little while here. How's it going guys? So it's the next day. Today we're gonna be chopping this hay. My dad's out raking it right now. It's actually pretty good and dry. We've had some good sunlight this week. The days are shorter now and we had heavy dew, but it's still drying out. For my whole life, we've done five cuttings of alfalfa every single summer. Next year, we're planning to put corn in these fields and we're not starting any alfalfa. So it's gonna be a bit of a change for us. I'm not saying we'll never do alfalfa again, it's possible, but switching over to more double cropping, uh, triticale. We're currently not feeding any alfalfa to the cows and they're milking really well, doing well for us. It doesn't seem like we need that alfalfa to, to make milk and have healthy cows. So kind of changing our strategy a little bit currently. I climbed up on the silo. I'm gonna open this large harvest door again. This silo has haylage on the bottom from third and fourth cutting. And then we put some silage on top of that. Now we're putting fifth cutting haylage with this sorghum mixed with it on top of the silage. So it's gonna feed off the bottom. It'll be a little bit of a funny mix. As you're feeding out of these harvest stores, it doesn't switch from one feed to the other evenly. So it'll be a little bit of a mix, I guess, for a little while there. Try to do the best we can and we're gonna feed it to our heifers. All the water that runs off the hard surfaces around our farm ends up down in this waterway. And we got some rain recently, so it's kind of low in this area. I was able to get it mowed in when I'm driving through with the big chopper there, putting ruts in it. So we just raked it up off to the one side and then they were able to chop it from the edge. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this video up. See you guys in the next one. I think we'll be harvesting soybeans later this week. 